Live from somewhere in the Midwest, Netters Network and YouTube bring you Netters Network Retro Cinema. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Netters Network Retro Cinema. Tonight we'll be watching a double feature. Uh, we're going to be watching It's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown, along with The Easter Bunny is Coming to Town. Makes me kind of think of Santa, but okay. There's a lot of uh, similarities between the two. We'll talk about it. Yes. And as you can hear from my voice... Troy's gotten me sick now. Yeah. Because he was sick and now I see he got what sick. he got. And we don't know how. We don't see people. We both work from home. We don't really go anywhere. And the last time we were out of the house was over a week ago. So we don't know how we're sick. It's just weird. Yeah. The anyway. Pacelli pathogen. I guess. It's something. Yes. Uh, at any rate, let me introduce to you my co-host for the night. We have the poor little drone bird. <laughs> yeah, that's she how I his, feel. His little swimming pool nest. Woodstock. Otherwise known as that guy at the end of the bar. Or the love of my life, Troy Pacelli. How are you doing tonight? And what are you sipping on, sweetie? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing about as well as could be expected with a full-on cold. Um, I got a, a Rockstar Energy drink just because I want to get through the stream. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking... Um, Excuse me. You're just <laughs> choking on a cran grape <coughs> juice. There you go. Um, yeah, which I decided to choke on the second I took a sip. <coughs> exactly. And of course, our um, egg laying bunny. Yeah. <laughs> egg laying male bunny. <laughs> yeah. I think somehow that makes it worse. All right. <laughs> You don't know how the Easter Bunny identifies. Uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Everyone's cute. Kelly Teddy Bear. Big Al, how you doing tonight, sweetie? And what are you sipping on? I am doing well. I am sipping on a uh, Diet Mountain Dew. And uh, I'm, sad, I'm, I'm sad you guys are sick. Uh, Kurt, <coughs> Kurt, Kurt has said it may come from eating the eggs purchased from me. <laughs> nah, yeah, right? Uh, I have been eating a lot of eggs lately just because I've had a taste for them, so I don't know. Good point. Uh, but yeah. Well, I'm in the morning. Well, before we get into anything, let's yeah. say hello to our lovely chat. Hello, our lovely chat. Yes, first up is Lady Miss saying good evening, but then she follows up with Big Sort of Windows did an unwanted update and messed up everything on my PC. It's working again, sort of. Oh, um, I can sympathize. Yeah. I can totally sympathize with that. Then we have, I, I know this guy, Big Al. Yeah. I know I've seen him around before. So welcome to the chat. Uh, let's see who else we have. Yeah, I, I hear he's an excellent co-host. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Lady V. Elements. Well, if he's not, the yoke's on us. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Lady V. Elements giving sneaky hugs to me. Yeah. Hey, sweetie. We have Curtis Selby in this in the street. I almost said in the stream, in the chat. How you doing, sweetie? Uh, Continuum Chronicles. Greetings, my friends. Um, nice all the peoples. We have Last Call saying hello to everyone. Yep. Hello, hello. Love you too, Netter. <laughs> Thank you for sharing my illness. <laughs> well, we've been married 31 years. We share everything. Whether we want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> we have Sir Tour and Clicking in the chat. How you doing, sweetie? And deleted scene. If we get anyone in the chat sick, is that a computer virus? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, when oh, I'm in this condition, you can't expect the, the prime jokes. <laughs> are, they, are they ever prime? Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we have uh, JPRPH1. How you doing, sweetie? Uh, let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Sniffling. Jesse Cojardo, how you doing tonight, sweetie? It's like every time I see a new name, it's like, oh, discovery. Like a prize. Lots of cuss back, how you doing, sweetie? Samuel Proctor just 
got back from seeing Ben Hur in a vintage theater. <gasps> yeah, he had mentioned awesome. the other night he was going to be doing that. That would be so awesome. Uh, okay, there's Samuel Proctor. Yeah. Just came from watching Ben Hur for the first time in a vintage theater that played it back then, no less. Wow. Wow. What a masterpiece. Say hi, Samuel Proctor. Yeah, they probably just had it still sitting around since then and said, oh, we might as well pull that out again. <laughs> and I've gotten to the bottom of the chat. So, have both of you seen both these, these uh, shows we're going to see tonight? And I suppose I should pin the... Uh, pin the Cosme link to the chat, yeah. yeah. Um, Big Al? I don't know, actually. I, I might, I might, if I have, it's been a long, long time. Uh, I'm sure I've caught the Rankin Bass one because, right? You know, I used to catch all of those. It seemed at one time or another, but but sadly, you know, outside of Christmas, the other ones kind of get lost a little bit. Uh, like the like, uh, it's the Easter Easter Beagle. You know, you don't see that on right. television or streaming, is, uh, or even very easily find on streaming. True. True. Um, I have to admit that although I have, huh? I need you to talk for a bit. I gotta go up and check on what I'm cooking. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I had forgotten uh, about both of these for quite a long time. I have seen them both, but, um, so with the peanuts, I had bought that box set that contains the Halloween, Christmas, and, uh, what is it? Halloween, Christmas, and Thanksgiving specials. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, there's, you know, either a, an updated version, you know, a, the, there's the other Christmas one on, 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 on the other, you know, for the double feature. I think there's, for Thanksgiving, there's there's one about American history or something like that, and I forget what the other one was. But uh, there's no Easter one in there. And I literally just got the DVD this week, uh, this past week. Uh, specifically to, to get ready for this. Yeah. Um, and so I realized I have not watched it since, you know, before I got married, you know, when it was on TV all the time. Or, you know, at least this time of year. Right. Um, but the Rankin and Bass, yeah, I watched it for as long as that was on TV. I watched that every year at this time of uh, the time of the year. And see, I, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, even after... I would have otherwise outgrown a lot of these things. Uh, my brother, who was six years younger than myself and severely autistic, uh, I mean, he was like a child all of his life. So um, every year we still did all of the, the, the child-y things for him. So I was still able to enjoy that but, you know, right up until I moved out. But honestly, do you ever really outgrow these they are they are just wonderful slices of of, of uh, well I could say Americana I guess but yeah uh, uh, well just like you know you think about uh, like Christmas I always watch Rudolph yeah even if I'm by myself just watching Rudolph and I don't feel it's out of I mean I'm a 58 year old man and I'm still watch you know oh yeah it's not Christmas unless I see Rudolph darn it. And, uh, you know, Easter's the same way. I, I, I've, I've been watching, uh, well, it's, it's not a cartoon, but, you know, Ten Commandments being on, it's, you know, it's not really Easter unless I see part of that. I'll finish, finish watching what I have missed tomorrow because I have it on, I have it on my computer. So. Sure. Um, and yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. I don't know. Uh, I guess I've always just assumed that, kind of like I did with, you know, things like, uh, uh, I, I've talked with, with other uh, YouTubers about, you know, growing up with certain things and, you know, certain cartoons and whatnot you didn't really get into because you kind of aged out. You know, I never really got into, um, uh, like, when, when Power Rangers started, that was, I was already on to other things and you know i, I wasn't interested <laughs> I, watched, uh, I watched them <laughs> oh sure because i like that kind of stuff. but uh, but uh but there was a there was a transition period but i always did yeah. hold on to the things that i enjoyed as a kid 
And then, yeah, these holiday specials, they were just always in yeah. my house. Uh, they're they're kind of... And the sad thing is uh, they don't really make this kind of stuff anymore. No, they do not. Because, because uh, you know, everybody says war and Christmas. I mean, Easter almost is bad. It's not as... Uh, car- you know, it's not as cartoony of a holiday. Well, I, you would think, considering it has an Easter money and colorful eggs, it just lends itself for that. I do feel that over time, we got all this, you know, it used to be, and, and you saw it especially with the, the Charlie Brown Christmas special, they knew even then, I, I, well, that was what, the 60s? Mm-hmm. They were uh, already, you know, bemoaning the, the, uh, the commercialization of the holidays and the loss yeah. of the focus of the religious origins of them. And as time has gone on, it's only gotten worse as you've had the, the secular population really eschewing anything religious uh, to the point where now the president will not allow eggs that have a religious theme in the White House egg hunt. That's how and, bad things have gotten. I was because when I was I was looking up uh, Easter images earlier, and uh, you know eggs, people would put so much effort yeah. into making these beautiful multicolored patterned yeah. eggs, yeah. and now you're lucky if they even bother to dip them in that that vinegar stuff for a half yeah. a second. Exactly. Oh, they'll just, or they'll just buy the plastic, you know, mo- you know, regular pink, pink, purple, yellow eggs and just, you know, throw them everywhere. Or do you remember they they not only had the kits for doing the eggs, but they also had at one point they had these like a plastic sleeve you put on it and dip it in water and it would shrink to the egg. And yeah, it looked yeah. real ornate, but it was like a trans. Pa- what it paws? Yeah. A A S or something. Was the company? I know that was one company that did it a lot, stuff like that a lot. And I had one that was you'd put the egg into it. It was like um, or it'd come with little stickers, you know. You oh, can, sure, sure. Uh, I had this little device, this plastic device that it was kind of like a lathe that you you know uh, had spring loads on the either side that would hold oh, the egg. Oh yeah. And you could spin it, and it had like uh, markers that you put into it, and you could. Oh make yeah, it. my sister had that one. Yeah, yeah I, remember, I loved yeah. that thing. Because you can almost like do the spire, kind of like spire graph concept. Kind of, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, sweetie, I was trying to make a surprise for you. Oh, that's okay. It burnt. I burnt me. There's a mess all over the kitchen counter. Oh, okay. Well, so. surprise. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of what's what's, and then you know, on top of all that. We've had this move to stream. This is why Nettert always does the the peanuts things now, mm-hmm. for for you guys to be able to watch along with us because there is no other way unless you subscribe to what is it Apple I streaming service, and it's like you know what, screw your paywall, you know. Just my feeling on it. Yeah. Absolutely, it's like don't put sure. the classics behind a stupid paywall. Yeah. Curtis Selby talk about the Royal Russian Easter eggs, those Fabergé eggs. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that. Oh, man. Those are beautiful. And the thing is, if you use, like, food coloring and whatnot, you're good, right? You mm-hmm. can still use those eggs afterwards, make uh, an egg salad or whatever. At least that's what my grandma did. But um, if you're going to start using <laughs> markers and, you know, paints and stuff like that, I almost wish there was an option that was not eggs, you know, that was, like, egg-shaped I don't well, I'm know. sure. I'm sure you could get like some egg shape kind of probably, thing. probably could like yeah. a little, like a little cardstock or styrofoam or something like that. You could just yeah. draw on it and not worry about eating them because he- eggs are expensive nowadays, folks. That's for sure. That's for sure. I they mean, come this down, is... they came down a snitch the last couple of weeks, but. They, Guys, spi- they spiked, went, came down, all the way back down, but then they went up again. I thought we had it banned in the Chicagoland area, but there's a, a bloke that I've been watching on YouTube who lives in New York who's chronicling basically all the businesses leaving New York and how, like, a gallon of milk is $7 in New York. Each. And I'm like, holy crap. He's like, yeah. He's like, the average person can't afford to live here. 
and they're all moving out and as they move out so does their tax revenue which makes it even harder uh crime rates going up 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 um homeless problems becoming bigger and bigger and it's like gosh you know i used to compare the what we're going through now to the the carter era 70s i think this is way way worse way way worse oh yeah i remember the uh odd and even days for gas right did that go by did that go by your name or did that go by your license your, plate your license plate that's what i thought that's yeah, what i thought yeah, i was just talking about it the other day license plate remember. if your license plate had an even number it would, you would you know it was like monday wednesday friday and the other one was tuesday thursday and you were still Saturday. in a queue, I'm like not down the sure street. About Sunday, well, I forget. I forget how they dealt with Sundays, but or the other day. And then, yeah, there was there sometimes be lines and everything. But I, 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 I just remember that. Guys, nothing, nothing that's happening now hasn't happened before. Oh, what my burns? History repeats itself. Or it rhymes. However what you want to look at it. What'd you burn there? I mean, what was, was the surprise? I was trying to make sure his cough drops so we'd have them before he went to bed. Uh -huh. And I checked on it. It, like, had five minutes left. And when I went to check on it, because it, I was down here longer, it burned. So I was trying to get it into another container to take outside so it wasn't going to stink up the, the whole kitchen. Well, not thinking... I poured it into a plastic bag, not thinking Ooh. plastic's going to melt. Right. So it ended up leaking all over the counter. And when I tried to pick it up to put out something that wouldn't melt, I burnt two of my fingers. Ooh. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Did you blister? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure I will. Okay. My thumb especially, that got the worst of it. I'm sorry, sweetie. Uh, thanks live. for trying, though. I do appreciate the concern, but I, I'll be fine. I'll end up with a blister. It'll go away in a couple of days. Uh, Lady V says... And uh, I am icing it. Uh, Lady V says Nike will dose him instead. She did that last night. I think um, I think that made me feel more, you know, head woozy in the morning than if I hadn't tried it. I think I'm going to try not to take it tonight. But you were able to sleep, weren't you? Yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. See, Netter knows best. Uh, Troy, did you ever try the Easter egg confetti that you smash <laughs> on people's heads? No. Okay, so. Yeah, we need more explanation on that one. I don't yeah, know. is that a is that a purchased item or do you have to make it? Because I could totally see like, you know, blowing the 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 insides out of the egg so you have an empty shell closing it up with wax on one side and then filling the other side with with confetti so you could basically make them yourself never would have thought of uh clobbering someone over the head with that that's a pretty good idea don't overfill them if you do that because you need enough breakage so that you're not like clunking them in the head oh like a plastic egg filled with confetti okay yeah that's another okay, way to go i'm gonna dispel dispel this spell an old wives tale right now Geek Flag Grenade said, rub some butter on it. Okay, no. Butter will keep the heat in because it's it's uh, basically a... Um, it's an oil. It's, a, it's an oil keeping the heat next to your skin. Exactly. But the second part is ice pack. Yes, I am using an ice pack right now on there. Um, but yeah, you should never put butter on a burn. It's one of the worst things you can do for it because that oil will keep the burn... Uh, it will keep it burning. It'll keep that the heat in. Yep. So never put butter on there. If you ever burn, the first thing you do is what I did and why I learned in first aid class. First thing I did is I turn on the cold water, put my fingers under it to stop the the burning. I kept them in there for a minute or so to make sure the burning stopped uh, or the initial burning stopped. Then I grabbed an ice pack, which I currently have on my lap, and I am keeping the burnt parts on there to cool them down further. Yeah. So that uh, hopefully I oops. Hopefully, I oh. don't blister. Ooh, got a little uh, auto tune. Yeah, well, she. she her, I, I her, actually pulled out my earpiece. Yeah, so that her her her, her sound was coming yeah. through her speaker. Uh, coconut. Yeah, my my headset um, jack uh, port is on the side of my laptop. I wish it was in a different spot because I keep hitting it with my left hand. Uh, you're right, uh, Lady V, about the coconut oil, but not until after the burning stops. Right. That's something she could do maybe starting tomorrow. 
Yeah, yeah. And we definitely have coconut oil. Troy uses it from popcorn. Yep. Yeah, well, oh, that's yep. what you said too, right, Al? You, you use coconut oil for your uh, for your popcorn. <laughs> Lady B says she's happy to help me apply it. Aren't you a sweetie? Oh, yeah, I've heard coconut. A lot of people use coconut oil, or what's the other oil? There's another oil that I've heard a lot about, but coconut and, oil's the closest to what they use in the theater without yeah, having yeah. trans fats in it. You get, you know, and it gets a flavor call. That yeah, makes it's it like. Geekleck said that Grandma always uh, used butter and then ice. It's like, I know, it's like I grew up with the same thing. Mom would always put butter on it. And so we had um, a first aid class, gosh, this is close to 30 years ago, when uh, the instructor was like, okay, how many of you grew up putting butter on burns? And pretty much all of us raised our hands. We're like, yeah, don't ever do that. That's bad. Yeah. And explained why. And it's like, but it's what Mom always did. It's like, yeah, well... Mom got from her mom, who got from her mom, who got from her mom, et cetera, et cetera. And it was always a bad idea. Uh, Jesse says, yeah, homemade. Oh, cool. Uh, wax paper glued to the bottom. Uh, yeah, uh, I would I would say uh, a little drop of wax, though. That's what I always... Because, you know, something else we used to do as kids uh, with the hollowed out egg, you know, the, the full eggshell, you'd, you'd put uh, rice into them and make maraca. Ah, Oh, I remember doing it. Yeah, yep. that was fun. I remember doing stuff like that. Yep, yep. Okay, we well, should probably... Uh... Yes, I need to put the link in there. I got interrupted when I got burned. Oh, sorry. Give me a second. Making me feel all guilty, and I didn't even know you were doing it. Well, I thought I would have it done before the stream. Uh, didn't. Because <laughs> I figured it could be cooling while we're on the stream, but... No, of course not. Hey, Chris. Nate. Welcome, welcome. Okay, I have the Cosme link now pinned to the top of the chat. You should all see it. Please right click on that and come join us in Cosme. Oh, now, now I'm kind of starting to smell some burning, but I could barely smell anything, so. Yeah, I was trying to, I, I didn't get it outside. It was, it was too hot to move and I was gonna burn myself any further and make a bigger mess. Yeah. So it's sitting on the counter in a mess. All right. Uh, so we're starting with uh, the Easter Beagle. Um, if you have, uh, if you have, if you're watching in the, cause I'm going to assume that everybody that's here is just going to watch along with us on Cosme. So you don't even have to worry about anything, but if you're watching along with us in the future and you have your own copy, we're going right from the beginning and that's going to be whether it's VHS or DVD, uh, your streams, you're going to have to kind of have to, to gauge it. Yeah. It just kind of starts, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Just like the, the, the old TV shows, there was no no uh, intro, no nothing. It, it starts right into it, and then you right, get the... Right on Marcy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You, it's it's like you get a prologue, then you get the, the title and the opening music and whatnot. So uh, that's kind of how all of the, the Peanuts went. Kind of so. like James Bond. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Good point. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe maybe I'll have to think about this. Maybe there's like a Snoopy Bond connection. You know? <laughs> I'll come up with something. Yeah, yeah Geek make Flag, all the comparisons. Geek Flag, Troy didn't even know I was trying to make this for him. My idea was I would have because you have to cook it on the stove so that you have kind of this molten cough drop mixture. Then you pour it in. The instructions say to make little drops on wax paper. I tried that one the first time I made it years ago. And it's really messy and doesn't work out really well. So I have some of those small bullet ice cube trays. I found if I pour them in there, and then once it cools, you break them out, you have the perfect shaped, identical shaped um, cough drops. And you just throw some powdered sugar on them so they don't stick together, and you've got homemade cough drops. So my plan was, I make the mixture, pour it into the ice cube trays, and by the time we're ready for bed, it's definitely solidified, yeah. and it's ready to go for them, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I burnt it. Yeah. You know, Netter, it sounds like a possible future video on Netter's network. Oh, good point. I could do that. Yeah, let's, we'll get the kitchen cleaned up, and then you can film the next batch you make. <laughs> well, yeah, I could do that. All right, so uh, we are at the zero, zero oh, mark. Good night, Continuing Chronicles. Yep. Happy Easter. Well, this is actually the one second mark, but I don't think it's going to matter. So uh, here we go. Three, two, one, play. Hey, 
And I'll tell you, it's because of these that I need jazz in my holidays, you know? Mm -hmm. She's so short she can't reach the doorknob. Right. That's a high, that's a high doorknob. That whole sir thing does lend itself to the uh, modern Wokoso, you know, gender thing that everyone pokes at. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. I have seen it. I remember this now, yeah. Well, you didn't tell her how to make the eggs. Yeah, yeah. You don't assume that people know how to how to do it. Yeah, it's like there was um a professor who had his uh, his kids write out instructions on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And mm -hmm. then after he wrote the instructions, he did literally what they had on the paper. So, oh, uh, they had to put down very specifically how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Otherwise, he you know they'd end up things with. Okay, put jelly on the bread. He'd pick up the jar of jelly, put the whole jar on the on the bread. They're like, no, that's not how you do it. Well, that's what your instruction says. Right. So they had to actually say, take the lid off the jar of jelly, put your well, knife in the jelly, take some out, and spread that on the bread. Well, when he did that, he was just spreading it like along the edges. So like, no, you got to put it on the, the main part. They're like, well, your instructions didn't say that. It just said to put it on the bread. And it just kept going on and on like this. Until they realized that, yeah, if someone who had never, ever, ever made a sandwich before right. saw these instructions, they'd probably do it the same way. So, yeah. in the end, they oh. finally got it down to exactly how to do it. We, yeah. had, uh, we had a similar thing. I don't know if it was in high school or if it was one of my college classes, but it was brushing your teeth. Oh. You had to write out the instructions of brushing your teeth, and then the teacher... Would, would do the same thing, like, uh, no, you forgot to, you know, you the well, didn't say that. <laughs> Poor Woodstock. Yeah, he's got no roof, but he's got a built-in elevator. And then he has no spine. Because <laughs> he's got <laughs> twisted. Okay, that's just wrong. And he only cleans one air. It's like, well, come on, come help me. So the funny thing was, of course, that the dog was sleeping on top of his house, too. It's like, what do you want me to do about it? What good is an elevator that you have to fly to use? See, I still don't understand what you're saying. Now do you understand? Yeah, do they understand each other? Because sometimes it seems like they do, and then sometimes it seems like they don't. Well, I think most of the time that they do understand each other, they you, you, you understand them as well as they do because you get it all from context. Mm-hmm. This time you wouldn't, because we only do because we saw him, you know, with the flooded out nest. Right. I want to know where Linus gets his ideas for, like, the Great Pumpkin and the Easter Beagle and all this. Someone must have told him somewhere along the line. Well, I guess the Easter Beagle kind of makes sense because it does seem like an amalgamation of the actual Easter Bunny and I don't know where he gets the Beagle part from. <laughs> it's, like you, it's like you thought you had something there and then it kind of got like lost. Well, I mean, other than the fact that his friend has a, a Beagle that is his pet. Yeah. 
But he also says something about all the good little kids, so it's kind of like a Christmas thing thrown in there. Well, that the gray pumpkin. It's like you know, you have to be good to get right good st- to get the stuff. Well, and I always imagine that the whole thing with the great pumpkin had to do with living in a rural area, you know, and and having all of these like. Uh, uh, fairs you know these 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 uh, farming fairs and whatnot and you know maybe they had like uh events where they judged you know uh pumpkin patches or something like that and he just associated it all with the holiday only 246 days until christmas right yeah I never understood that myself. It's like, okay, I understand you want to get your seasonal merchandise so people have plenty of time to buy it. But when it's like summertime and I'm looking for a bathing suit, don't tell me I should have bought it back in the wintertime. Because in the wintertime, I wasn't thinking that I need to buy a bathing suit. Right. It's now summer. The and problem it is, about, you know, and, and, I've, and I've heard this from, from friends that work in retail, they have almost no storage space. So you are getting what is available at that time, and when it's gone, it's gone. So sometimes they're trying to get seasonal things in early, but you still have the same problem of you have to get it while it's available. Okay, those two need to clean up their mess. Right. They are a retail worker's worst nightmare. Mm-hmm. You don't make a mess and then don't clean up. Oh, I know. We have borders, that kid section. Parents would just drop their kids off in there, just terrorize the place. I expect to see Netter on one of the other elevators there. (laughs) Okay, how is Snoopy still going down when he went down on the first one? You didn't see him get in the elevator on the other side. Uh. I remember being in department stores like that that had the multiple floors and you'd always miss the floor you were looking for because the elevators didn't go the way you thought they did. Yeah. She wants to be tall and fall. (laughs) Exactly, Nate. They got black gumballs. Must be licorice. I was going to say, those are the licorice ones. I love licorice. A lot of people don't. But I like black licorice. I like black licorice. A lot of people don't, but I do. That's yeah, why I, I like really um, Good and Plenty. Oh, black yeah. Licorice. I love Good and Plenty. Dancing bunnies. For a second there, I thought this was going to be a David Lynch production. <laughs> Okay, it's kind of become a David Lynch production. I mean, how does he somehow get inside the egg? This has got to be like an imaginary thing. Is that supposed to be break dancing? <laughs> uh, no, it's more like uh, an Irish jig. <laughs> There's something kind of sweet about that. I do like candy corn, uh, Nate. Just... In small quantities. Too much of it, and I'll get sick. I also like candy corn. Yeah, I gotta be in the mood for candy corn. (laughs) Well, the reason I bring up the bathing suit, Jesse Guardo, is it was um, one year for school. One of the, uh, you would have certain classes for gym um, that was like, you would have like one type of gym class during one quarter, then another during the next quarter, etc. Well, it's like, so for one quarter, we were just doing volleyball. The next one we were doing like softball or something. Well, one of my quarters was swim class. And I didn't have a bathing suit that fit me because I hadn't worn one in a couple of years and I actually had grown a couple inches. 
So I went looking for a bathing suit. It's like, what the heck? Why can't I find a bathing suit anywhere? I mean, this was like, you know, um, I want to say May. And it's like, you know, it's like the last quarter of the year. And it's like, okay, because, you know, you usually get out for school, like somewhere like near the end of June. And it's like I couldn't find a bathing suit anywhere. I mean, I did finally, eventually find one in like a sporting goods store because I guess they have them for, um, you know, athletes that compete and stuff. So it was a little bit more pricey than I really wanted to spend on one. But I did get a bathing suit. Okay, I do like this. <laughs> he, he, he widens out the hole because he realizes, okay, fine. <laughs> and I get that. I would have done the same thing. It's like, you ungrateful little bastard. <laughs> I made you a... A birdhouse so you wouldn't get wet. Right. Well, he bought it for him, but still. I thought Chick Productions. Oh, right. <laughs> well, good point. She's still mixing up that dye, huh? Yep. Nate dropped the candy corns into the chat uh, for Cosme. Yeah. You? That's a mess. You know, for as as good as she was doing on frying those eggs, it's like she got lobotomized between that scene and now. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does she... She can't actually bake them, but I want to keep them on the cardboard tray. Exactly. I was just thinking the same thing. I'm like, actually, that could work. Yeah, because that's the way I hard boil my eggs. I put them in the oven at 325 um, for roughly 25 to 30 minutes and then they're done for, for hard boiled eggs yeah for hard boiled yeah eggs. you can bake them it comes out oh. the same way yeah you can uh, do it yeah it's like some people do on 325 some people do on 350 but you bake them for about 25 to 30 minutes so i usually split the difference and do 27 minutes and they're perfect and what you do is uh Obviously, you don't do what Marcy just did. You don't put the whole thing in. You put them into uh, muffin tins. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't put them in in a cardboard container. Right, exactly. But actually, what uh, what temperature do you bake them at? Uh, 325, usually. You probably could do them in cardboard. Cardboard wouldn't combust until over 400 degrees. Hmm. Hi, Joshua V. Actually, I think it's 450 degrees. Peppermint Patty, your Marcy is broken. <laughs> He's made a lounge. That looks like a Mego playset from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Or like uh, one of the articles uh, on, on uh, home decor in Playboy magazine. He's like, how in the world did he do that? Well, especially when you see the uh, the stairs. It's like, what the heck, dude? Which implies a second floor. And then when it breaks, there's no furniture. Now you broke his house. <laughs> So Jesse has a dark theory that Linus uh, could be trying to start a cult. It's not a bad idea. I could see that. Okay, you know, you know that I think he's a rapper, Snoop Dogg. He probably got from us. Oh, she's sure. calling him all Snoop. And yeah, he's a dog. So Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg.
Yeah, was uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 worth it? It's like, okay, three of them she winds up all the way. The second one she just hit a switch or something. And she didn't touch two at the back, so how are they moving? Okay, yeah, this is the kind of thing I would do in a store, too. Oh, yeah, so if we'll go down the toy aisle and all the the ones where you could press a button to make them make a sound, I'll go down and press all the buttons and keep on going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Samuel. I want to see some some uh, a fan film like that. Maybe done by College Humor or something like that. Or the same guys who are doing uh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard they're doing a sequel. I'm like, oh my gosh! They've done a sequel. It is out. I've got it in my queue. I haven't watched it. I'm kind of wondering if I want to or not. The first one was... I was just going to say, it's not going to be better than the first one. Terrible. <laughs> and apparently Snoopy had exact change in his Snoopy pocket. And this time he, he, he put a ladder together. Oh, no, no problem with the, the size of the hole this time. Hey, phrasing! Oh, boy. She's going to make egg drop soup. Yep. Poached eggs. <laughs> Poached, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go get rid of this thing. My thumb's okay. I mean, and really, what is poached eggs other than, you know, soft, soft-boiled egg, you know? Yeah. Shellless soft-boiled eggs. Yeah. I've never done poached eggs. It's, I I have not found an easy way to do it. You know, peppermint patty. You should just do it yourself. <laughs> I mean, again, on this one, I totally get what she's doing. It smells like soup. She did. She made egg soup. Put a you know, ch put a chicken bouillon cube in there. And... Yeah. Well, then you got the mother and child reunion. <laughs> Delisa says heard it's better if that's possible late night with the devil as well where the watch yeah I'm waiting for that to drop I haven't none of my sources have had it yet um egg, egg drop soup scrambled poached eggs I actually don't know exactly how it's prepared I don't know if they scramble it before they put, put it in the in the broth or if it, it's a slightly scrambled, broken up egg a little bit. Not not like a full scramble, but just enough to kind of have have little white strips yeah. in it. And then you just you know you just kind of dribble dribble it in to your to your soup. And I don't even remember. I don't even know all what all's in it. I used to get it at this one little. Uh... Asian takeaway place by my by my house where I grew up. I loved it. Uh, there's a little bit of scallion think, onion in it, and yeah, I think the place where that I always got it. It was just the broth of the uh, wonton soup. It's just that chicken broth with yeah. a few, you know, with a few 
little strands of little egg in it, right? Stuff in it with with egg and like I said, a little bit of scallion and. I mean, there's some sort of an oil in it, but I I don't know exactly what it is. I I would assume it's probably sesame oil yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I would think toast of sesame. Oh, well, let me. I know we're sitting at computers, right? We could just look it up. Right, that's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Egg drop soup. Authentic 15 minute recipe. Yeah, Egg drop that. soup is beaten in a separate dish and slowly poured into the broth while stirring. Mm -hmm. Usually sesame oil added at the end. Okay, that see, that makes yeah. sense based on what I know from its texture and flavor. Yeah, it's uh, four cups of chicken stock, half a teaspoon of sesame oil, salt, sugar, white pepper, turmeric, cornstarch, uh, eggs, a scallion, and MSG. So I it never sounds fairly simple. I never would have thought cornstarch because I never thought of the the soup being very thick at all. Definitely, you know what MSG guys. For anything savory, you know, I, I highly recommend it. It just it, kind of bumps it up. <laughs> any broth or or soup or whatever, yes, absolutely. See, this does kind of come off as a little bit of redemption for Linus, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and I f I have to believe that was all his his intent, you know. A boink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, what's interesting about this theory of... Yeah, I'm just going to lie on it. This theory of, of the Easter Beagle bringing you an egg, you kind of lose the whole element of going f hunting for the egg. Well, that's the difference between the rabbit and the beagle. The beagle gives it to you, the bunny makes you hunt for it. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'm with you there. There you go. See, now, if they would tied this into a uh, product placement, he should have, like, looked in, not found any, he had any more eggs. Charlie Brown's all bummed out about it. So he reaches into a pocket or something and pulls out a Cadbury cream egg or something. <laughs> or Charlie Brown should have had a painted rock. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh... Yeah. It reminds me of that scene from uh, from Alita Battle Angel with the orange. He goes, will you eat it? And she bites into it. And she goes, oh, oh. He goes, no, no, no. And he shows her how to peel it. He's like, the heck? <laughs> but I like the little fourth wall break he does. Kind of looks at us. Yeah, kind of exactly. Guy. And this time he charms her. She's not yelling, ah, get the iodine. Music composed by Vince Guaraldi, of course. Such a wholesome, right? Show. You know, there's no controversy unless, of course, someone brings up there's no, you know, there's no black kids. Yeah, exactly. Well, they haven't met Franklin yet. <laughs> right. This is obviously taking place after the Thanksgiving, or excuse me, the Halloween one, because they make reference to it. Right. Probably the Christmas one as well. 
But we haven't necessarily done the Thanksgiving one yet. Well, the Christmas one was the first one. Right. Uh, no. Easter Beagle's coming to town. Okay. <laughs> Easter Beagle? <laughs> okay. So, we've had our Easter Beagle. Now we're going on to the Easter Bunny coming to town. Uh, same thing, you know, going right from zero, zero. Um, going to count three, two, one, and hit play. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, play. And see, this starts out exactly World the same news. way as Santa Claus is coming to town, right? With the news, you know, news brief or whatever. Which is also, oddly, the way Night of the Leapus starts. Ah, uh, good point. Good point. <laughs> oh, did you see the, the, the plastic Easter grass? You know what they call that? Easter-turf. <laughs> Look at those eggs. I know. Aren't they beautiful? I know. Oh, PJ. Welcome, welcome. Now, here's the other thing. This is all stop motion, right? So that means these are all miniature sets. I never really thought about that before. Yeah, all the kids think Thomas the Tank Engine was something special. Yeah, we, we were doing that years ago. <laughs> so is he playing the same character from Santa Claus is Coming to Town? I don't see why not. I, I think he is. He said yeah. he didn't go by tuk little tuk tucks anymore, and yeah. he's got a train now. I just figured this would also be a uh, great continuity because tomorrow night, or excuse me, Monday night, we'll be doing uh, Irving Berlin's Easter Parade with Fred Astaire. ERR Easter Railroad. Coming to town today. So, what you get here that you don't, that I don't really remember in a lot of the other Rankin and Basses, is the camera pulls back and you see this this landscape, which means they had to create this whole landscape on like I don't know a table maybe. Mm -hmm. Um. Maybe using forced perspective to make it look like a longer distance. And I would have to imagine backdrops that are painted, you know, like the sky blue behind it and whatnot. But still, that's pretty damn impressive. I certainly understand uh, Samuel Proctor. Um, yeah, but if you've never seen Easter Parade... I would encourage you to try and track down a copy or a stream of it or wherever it is because uh, it really is an Easter classic. Especially if you if you have a love of, of classic musicals, Irving Berlin and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Definitely worth it. But Troy, did they ever make a Halloween special? Are you talking about the Peanuts? Because... Yeah, the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Uh, or yeah, are you talking Pumpkin about uh, Rankin and Bass? Yes, Rankin and Bass did the... Was it the Mad Monster Ball or something like that? I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, Mad, Boris, Mad Monster Party. Mad Monster Party, that's what it was. And Boris Karloff uh, yeah. uh, did one of the voices.
I've got that on my computer. I need to watch that again one day. I'm going to have to find me a copy of that so I can play that come Halloween time. Kids grow up so fast. That's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand, Sir Torrin. Which is a real shame because you'd be you'd be a great addition to the panel for that. Gad Zooks. Oh, man, they could have easily made him a Bigfoot. Right? Yeah, time does fly, doesn't it, Jesse? Thank you, Lady Mist. So that's that's an interesting take, right? They find a rabbit in uh, a bird's nest, surrounded by eggs. Actually, Rankin Bass did a one called Jack O' Lantern. Oh, Mad Monster Party and Mad 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 Monsters. I did like these these hens. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> I'm killing all your children. <laughs> to me solid man <laughs> definitely 70s they did kind of skirt that whole you're killing our offspring thing Love the name. Hallelujah, H. Jones. Yeah. I'm going to have just to. Just how? I'm going to step away for just a second. I'll okay. be right back. Oh, thank you, Lady Miss, for dropping all the links. I appreciate you. That makes sense. <laughs> He's got some red cheeks on him, too. That does not look like friendly territory. Give him an egg. He's hungry. Guards. I wonder if the what's his name, Meister Burger Burgermeister lives there. <laughs> He just he just outlawed toys. <laughs> now he's outlawed kids. <laughs> Lily Longtooth. I love that name. <laughs> Must have a lot of gas. But you're not the queen, lady. She just don't know how royalty work. She can't tell him what to do. I mean, I realize he's a youngin, but she can't declare anything. That's not how it works. <laughs> he just dyed the eggs. I know there was a couple times where we'd dye eggs and there'd be a small crack in the shell. So when you peel the egg, it would be like whatever color dye had happened to get seeped through there. Yeah, it was almost like a marble effect. Yeah. It's 
insert commercial here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I guess say you're a rabbit, you're faster. Take a small sip. Guava juice with uh, um, coconut rum. Okay, that's why I said a small sip. Well, that's because you used a lot of coconut rum. I'll be feeling better by the time I finish drinking this. Give it to Mikey. He hates everything. Yeah, because I, I always wondered, the first person to eat an oyster, whoever did that and said, oh, this tastes wonderful. Yeah. No, the first one that ate oyster said, this tastes like snot. No, it looks like snot. It kind of tastes like it, too. Never had one. Don't think I ever will. Thing is, I really do like clams. He's got a point. Of course, sometimes you discover a food by accident. You exactly. know, like, who thought of popping corn to make popcorn? There's a lot of theories about it. You know, like, did someone, like, try toasting it and realize, <laughs> oh, it pops. And not only that, to discover that salt could be used to preserve foods. Yeah. <laughs> Their food still tastes better than the British, yeah, exactly. First person to eat hot and spicy food, yeah? And that's how the Easter Bunny came about. Okay, fair enough. Uh. Boing! <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he got his concussion. <laughs> He's supposed to tap both shoulders. Virtual. 
that that is pretty much what you do with it. But screw it, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> the first person to lick a toad either had crazy stories or died. <laughs> yes, exactly. Get it, egg spurt? Yep. Yeah, a little bit of salt. Well, I got nothing left for the yolk. I give it to Troy because... Because you don't like the yolk. Well, yeah. I, I don't mind them, but I know you like them, so I usually sacrifice them for you. My favorite part is the white part. That's way too much effort. I cook them, peel, take off the shell, put some salt on, eat them. Or you make egg salad. Yeah, try and make really yummy egg salad. Oh, what's your secret ingredient? I think she likes it because I add onion to it. Yeah, I love um, yum. Instead of celery. My mom used to use celery. I've never known anybody use celery in it. You're the only okay, people who okay. do that. <laughs> no, I, I know people use celery. You use celery? I have, yeah. I, I don't like, I don't like chopped. I call them crunchies. I don't like crunchies in my potato salad. Yeah, but I like the flavor. Yeah. So I just, I like, almost pummel them. Yeah. You know? I've also come to realize that uh, having egg salad on a toasted sourdough bread is oh. an incredible treat. Or in Netter's case, you know, a slightly warmed up sourdough bread. <laughs> Sometimes I'll take, I'll like cut the egg in half, put a little salt, a little pepper, and just a slight smidgen of mayonnaise. Okay, and, sure. And pop it down. I, I, I thought you were going to say a slight smidgen of mustard. That would be good too. Oh, that would work, too. Yeah. Hey, Jesse, that Man, does sound I'll, good, yeah. I, I, want, I want some deviled eggs now. Right? Yeah, it's like, I love onions. In fact, we call them onions in this onions, house. Onions, yeah. Jelly beans. Yes, and when you plant them outside, they grow a giant stalk you can climb. Oh no, sorry, wrong cartoon. <laughs> this is interesting because it's a, a fictional take on how uh, jelly beans were created. Okay, they just got those out of the oven, taking precaution not to get burnt, and now they're putting this molten yeah, lava yeah, thing yeah. in their mouths. Well, the thing is, that's not how you would make jelly beans I anyway. Know. <laughs> I mean, see, they, they do look more like good play, kind of. Yeah. Well, Actually, I they look like, like sprinkles. Like, <laughs> that too. Or, yeah, or, yeah, the, or Ike and Mike's. Yeah, Ike, Mike and Ike's, yeah. yeah Mike, Mike and Ike's, Ike's yeah. Although I really do. Remember Good and Fruity? Yeah, yeah. I didn't like those. I did. Well, it, I had a bad experience. I, I was I got sick after eating them and oh. I associated, you Good know. Good and Fruity. Are they still making those? Oh, sure they are. Good thing I'm eating because you guys are making me hungry. Okay, Lady V, I don't know what you saw that usually I'm the one that, that goes to the blue when the when a reference is made. I don't I didn't catch that one. Oh yeah, 
Old Bay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll put a dash of Old Bay on mine, too. Ooh. Old Bay. Oh, on your uh, on your deviled eggs? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. That makes... Yeah, because it's going to be either that or paprika. I don't... Yeah. I would I would get... I think you'd get more flavor from Old Bay. Yeah, I'm, and I'm a Marylander. Hell, you know, I got that. Mm. Good point. Good point. Um... I've never used branch dressing on it, though. I've always... Uh, so Jesse says he can never eat jelly beans again after finding out what they're made of. I I can only assume you're talking about what the gelatin is made out of, which means you shouldn't probably be eating jello or marshmallow or anything that's got any kind of gelatin in it. Jelly beans, jelly babies, um, gummy bears. Ooh, jelly babies. Yeah, it's like when I look up Gunner Fruity, I'm getting Mike and Ike. Yeah, maybe they don't make them anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Easter Bunny Poop. <laughs> well, so are my eggs. <laughs> it's Easter Bunny Poop. Um, one year, uh, when 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 we hit all the eggs, my dad went around and put little little piles of uh, raisinets and told my brother that the Easter Bunny had pooped <laughs> and he got sick. <laughs> I love the, the southern accent on the, on the chickens. Yeah. I noticed that was another recurring theme in these, is that they always overcome the bad guy with some kind of kindness. Yeah. yeah. Lady V, you should know by now. You can go ahead and share whatever it is you're thinking. I don't think I have any kind of, uh, you know, bad word, you know, filters or anything on here. Yep, the only one that I don't like people to say is taking Lord's name in vain. Other than that, but you can talk about porn all you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, they had a uh, tailor-made, Jesse. Now, the question would be how they got his measurements, but, you know. <laughs> Unless it's a bumble, then you just pull his teeth. Yeah, okay, good point. <laughs> Oh, now they're going to get him laid. <laughs> That's the best way to his heart, right? Through his there pants. Now, you think that's rouge on her cheeks. No, no, she, she just ate something. Thank you, Lady Mist. If you do. I mean, and what I love is that it's a frock coat, you know, and a waistcoat. I mean, it's a full on suit.
when you said wrong yeah. movie, everything, uh, everything's a porno to me. You know, it's funny that you say that, lady, because I kind of was thinking that on the um, the bit about eating the yolks. I, 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 I felt like there was a half-formed joke there, and I, I just couldn't quite get to it. And a couple of these songs, I was like, yeah, there could be uh, an adult parody of, of this, I think. Oh, shut up, Karen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's a sailor, he's a New Yorker. If we can get him laid, we're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, that's that's what I always said, you know. People used to joke, you don't want your sons playing with Barbie dolls because it might make them a little bit iffy. No, the reason that you didn't watch your, your, your kid, your boys playing with Barbies is because they stole them from their sisters and you didn't want to know what they had Barbie doing with G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a deep cut for you, Curtis. It's good to be Ishtar's bunny. How many people get that one? That's true. He's the ruler. That would make his aunt the... She's a dowager something or other, they said at the beginning. Well, that's her rank, but she would be the regent, right? Uh, so this would be yeah. a regency until he becomes of age. Secret weapon, secret weapon. And in case you didn't hear it when I came back, I switched to uh, guava juice and uh, coconut rum, so I'm I'm feeling significantly better. Uh-huh. Is that what you're calling it? It's for medicinal purposes. Troy, there was only one Barbie in the rank and file of G.I. Joe's, and she was an army nurse. Well, then she really got around, let me tell you. But actually, that's not true. They made another female Joe, I think it was in the 80s or 90s. And I, I can't remember, was she a pilot? Or something like that, I can't remember. Luddites are us would know. He, he knows his, his Joe's. <laughs> and that's also assuming you're not talking about the three and three quarter inch Joes that got released in 12 inch scale uh, in the 90s. Because I think there was a 12 inch Scarlet. And I would also say uh, I'm sure that there was. Um, a bunch of action man uh, figures, and I'll bet some of them were female, too. Okay. Am I the only one that that liked those hollow, cheap chocolate eggs that I know were really bad for you because they had, like, trans fats in them? I used to like them, but I was always disappointed they weren't solid. <laughs> no, 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 no. If they had been solid, I think I'd have gotten sick. I liked the hollow chocolate. I really did. I thought what would have been smart would have been to like fill the because you know they had to make them in molds right. in two parts you could fill them with like jelly beans or something oh yeah that would have been smart that would have been fun <laughs> yeah the 12 inch <laughs> figures i know what you meant jesse the ones that would be in scale with barbie 
Oops. Sorry about that. I picked up the wrong mouse. <laughs> Well, the G.I. Joe nurse could make everyone in town happy. <laughs> Apparently. It's like, I'm the king. Although, in fairness, that is a lesson he needs to learn if he's going to be any kind of a leader. You evil harpy! Right? You know, if they did this live action, I, I could see Nicole Kidman playing that part. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And he's going, dirty tricks, dirty tricks, dirty tricks. And I'm looking up to see what uh, Lady V's going to say. <laughs> they know how to eat a bunny. <laughs> oh, Lady V, I'm glad you're saying this stuff because I get in trouble. Okay, I found it, Jesse. 1997 G.I. Joe U.S. Jane Army Helicopter Pilot. So there was another female G.I. Joe besides the nurse. And actually, there was two nurses. There was one in the 60s and then there was another one in the 90s. Oh, Jesse had ones that had M&Ms inside of them. That's brilliant, man. Which means they were probably put out by M&M Mars. <laughs> you knew they were going to be singing Big Rock Candy Mountain when you know that the mountain is Big Rock. <laughs> That was that was too too contrived. Curtis, there was a time when you you assumed that kids knew things and if they didn't they would just ask their parents and they'd learn. Sure, just go ahead and do that. See, this is what I'm talking about. This was long before we had Thomas the Tank Engine. It's kind of looking like Mater from Cars. Kind of, yeah, right? <laughs> I, do, I do like Choo Choo Baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so funny. Oh, gee. Sir Torrance oh. says that sometimes those children learned a little too soon if their moms were the type of person that thought if they're old enough to ask, 
They're old enough to know. My mom did try to answer my questions in as appropriate a way as possible. So I did learn a lot rather young. Well, if they get the rust off of them, it'll be a lot better. <laughs> choo choo, baby. Even the big engines are kind of dancing a little. But they look angry. Well, they they they're stern and they're you know all full of themselves, but. You know, Al's right. They're like kind of getting in. You can't not when the 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 boogie gets to you. <clears throat> You're hired. Choo choo, baby. I like, I'll sure try. And and it's a, it's another good setup because not only have they placed Big Rock Candy Mountain for the song, it's something that the little engine that could has to get over. So mm -hmm. I think I can, I think I can, right? I you know, they they put some thought into these shows. Uh, yes, Chalk, I have done, um, Here Comes Peter Cottontail in the past. Um, and actually, Chalk, are you in YouTube to be hearing me? <laughs> I don't know if you're, if you're over here too. Lady V, can you let him know that, yeah, I've, I've done it in the past and I'll probably do it at some point in the future again? Maybe we did it last year, I think. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't want to do it again this year. And we try to vary up the different Eastery things. Yeah. Thanks, Lady V. Can do. Thanks, Curtis. I um I was watching a video on YouTube uh some some railroad channel and they were talking about those um I, what do they call them? Cattle scoops in the front? Yep. Which are absolutely not for cattle. Cow catchers. Cow catchers, right. That's absolutely not what they're for, but that is what they've come to be called. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of explaining what they were and how they were used. And, and he actually showed the restoration of one. What was their original use? It was kind of to protect the uh the front end of the engine mm -hmm. uh especially from like debris on the track and um like snow especially if in the winter time they put on like a pointed one to act as a plow but it couldn't take the kind of uh even even uh wrought steel couldn't handle if it hit a cow at like 80 miles an hour you know oh yeah Well, I mean, look at, I mean, just look at a car when it hits a deer. Exactly. Um, the idea being that the components in the front of the train are so 
um, hard to replace and kind of costly. And it was kind of like modern cars with the bumpers and a crumple zone. You know, that's really what it was meant to be. Now it does sound like a porno, yeah. See, Lady V, you're having an impact on Curtis there. <laughs> I I do think this is brilliant, you know, putting down the jelly beans over the butter to uh -huh. get over the... How dare they go past our trick? You're right. For all them nummy Easter eggs. I love that. <laughs> yeah, this is when you realize you're kind of losing the plot. When when your your subjects are kind of turning against you and rooting for the other side. <coughs> it's like what gives her so much power anyway? <laughs> Come on, Chugs! I think it's pretty obvious, Curtis, why your mind's going there. You're a red-blooded male, and Lady V's a bad influence. Can't did? Yeah, because he did it already. Then should it be I did? Well, yeah. Yeah, but the uh, the jelly beans make it sticky, so it's even better. And as implausible as the whole town of children is, this idea of bringing a town of adults together with a, a town of children meeting both of their needs, you know, is good storytelling, too. <laughs> Not if it's too sticky, Lady V. You need a good lube. <laughs> the buddy's like, I don't know, just roll with it. <laughs> Overcome the villain with kindness. Exactly, yep. Curtis. Exactly, Lady V. I, I get where you're coming from. But the fact is, this story is very, very similar to Santa Claus is Coming to Town. It's it's oh, just yeah. basically the same story with the Easter Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> the pole dancing guy and the evil regent... Uh, aunt hook up in the sequel. I like that. Oh, for a second I thought I said Lord Dern. Ah, uh, yeah. Dern. Yeah, there weren't a lot of, of voice actors in this one that I knew. Yeah, just uh, Fred Astaire. Chugga, 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 right. chugga. I wonder if the, if anybody ever made a ele electric train based on this. Oh, I'm probably not commercially, but I would imagine some customizers probably did, no doubt. 
Oh, this is a Warner Brothers one. I gotta check the date on this, make sure it's gonna last me. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to make a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that is uh, that is the Easter specials for the year. Well, I mean, enjoy your Easter tomorrow, but then mm -hmm. on Monday, I will be uh, uh, the uh, the last call. Monday night at the movies is uh, Easter Parade with Fred Astaire and uh, Judy Garland. Yeah, so that's going to be a fun time. And all the pretty clothes and more songs. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Oops. So, wrong keyboard. Is there anyone in the chat? Okay, I think we asked this earlier, but I want to any of you younger ones, maybe. Yeah, is there anyone who hadn't seen either of these? Or if you have seen them both, which is your favorite? The Snoopy one or the Easter Bunny one? I love the Rankin Bass. Right? Uh, it's just so, uh, for me, I mean, I, I do love Peanuts, but there's just something so comforting about the Rankin Bass specials. Um, Sir Torin, if I'm going to do the producers, then I'm going to have to plan it on a Monday when you can make it, because uh, I'm going to want you on the panel for that one. You are my uh, my Broadway uh, subject matter expert. Yeah. Zero Mostel. And Gene Wilder. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Who was in the remake? It was uh, uh, Matthew uh -oh. Broderick. And um, Nathan Lane, I think. Nathan Lane, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah there were a few right. songs from that that remake that were uh, that I really, really liked. I don't think the original had "Till Him" in it, and I really liked that song. Don't help mm. me. <laughs> don't help me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I had totally forgotten the Rankin and Bass one. Uh, I haven't seen that one since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Love the Peanuts special, but I still find it weird that everyone still shits on Charlie Brown. You know, I mean, this is also why people love Peter Parker, right? You know, people people relate to that underdog. And this is, I think, another reason why so many people push against this, this whole concept of the Mary Sue. We don't see ourselves in Mary Sues. We see ourselves in the underdogs who overcome, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and the sooner that the storytellers learn that, the better off we'll, we'll all be. Yeah, Sir Torrance said, I've seen the Peanut ones before, but I've never seen the Easter Bunny one. I like them both, but I really enjoy the Easter Bunny. Something about Fred Astaire narrating a story and singing yeah, makes exactly. me smile. Exactly, exactly. That's why it's too bad you can't be here Monday for Easter Parade. That's going to be a lot of fun. Beautiful Easter presentation. Thank you uh, for sharing it with us. Absolutely, Lady V. And every year we do try to show different ones because we've got a couple of different, I mean, like we have different Christmas movies. We have different Easter um, uh, movies, or I guess you could call these movies. Um, for different holidays, we do, and even like Halloween, we have different movies for all like Halloween stuff. And I'm sure there's some and I mean, ones in the middle there. If we're completely honest, considering all the, the movies we already have, doing these rewatches with you guys has actually been my excuse for getting some stuff that we didn't have. And, you know, I'll look and I'll go, wait, we don't have such and such? Got to order it. That's mm -hmm. how I came up with Drop Dead Fred, because I realized it wasn't in my collection, so I had to go and order it. And Amazon can get it to us, you know, in less than a week. So, you know, we okay. really don't have any excuses. Yeah, so it's like, um, if, like, because you guys will mention a movie, and it's like, do I have that one? And I'll look, and it's like, oh, I don't have that, so I'll order it. So it's like, yeah. Oh, uh, thanks, Nate. I really like hanging out with you guys and watching specials <laughs> like this. That's why we do it, you know? This is what I said. Uh, it used to be, when we were growing up, these specials were on network television. Mm -hmm. Everyone got to see them, and then we'd get together at school the next day and talk about them. You know, hey, did you see it last night? And either you did or you didn't. And if you didn't, it's like, that's okay, because you saw it the year before, you know, and whatnot. And <clears throat> you'd yeah, still have were, something to talk about. 
They were yearly specials. They always show me, you can always guarantee to watch them. Like, It's a Wonderful Life at Christmas time. It always came on. You always knew to expect it. So, Jesse, I saw your, your note earlier about the Peanut Super Bowl special. Did not even know it till you brought it up. Huh. So I've got a tab open right now uh, to find out a little bit more about it. And you said that it's not out on DVD, but I'm going to see if I can't find some copy of it somewhere. Because I'm, I'm, you know how I am. I'm kind of a completist, and uh, we can blame uh, Age Boomer for this. He's the one who who has been after me to complete my collection of Peanuts uh, cartoons. So I'm gonna have to see if I can't find it and get a hold of it. Yeah, it's like Troy actually completed. I think it was a his vampire collection with a really horrible vampire movie. And it's like, why'd you get that? I had to complete my collection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I've got a couple different vampire collections. It depends, but you're right. Once I start a series, I kind of have to get them all. Like, I got all of the Hammer uh, Draculas, uh, including both versions of uh, what is it, Dracula and the Seven Brothers, uh, and the Seven. What is the other version of it? the Seven Seven? Not the same as Seven Seven Hammer. Something Meet Dracula or whatever. It's two different edits. Uh, that that exist of the movie, and I had to have them both in my collection. They both kind of suck, but you know, <laughs> I just had to complete my 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 horror Dracula. Well, it's telling me with Bigfoot films, right? And this is why every time I see some other reference to a a, a, a Bigfoot thing, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm sure Al probably already knows about this, but I'm going to share it with him anyway, just in case, you know? Just in case. You, know, you never know. I mean, you get, sometimes you miss something. I don't want to be responsible for having known about something and not telling you about it, and then, you know, finding out, you know, a year later, oh, I don't remember the name of it. Oh, what was that, you know? <laughs> so, and, and Lady Miss is already uh, ahead of us, so let's really quick go down the week. I've already told you guys, uh, well, don't worry about Monday. We'll get there. Um, If you're still here, Deleted Scenes, let us know about uh, Sunday. I think you are still doing Western cinema with with, uh, um, Jedi Bill tomorrow at 3 Central, 4 Eastern. I don't know if you're doing anything else tomorrow night, but we will be doing Geeky Geezer's regular time, 8 Central, 9 Eastern. Uh, we will be uh, doing a send-up to Louis Gossett Jr. We will be talking about more gaming news related to uh, the, the so-called Gamergate 2.0 and uh, some other gaming-related news. There's just been a lot of gaming news in, 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 uh, going on right now. That's why, uh, that's why it's the focus. Yes, the seven golden vampires. That's no. right, deleted scenes. Thank you. And then the other one was the seven brothers meet Dracula. Um, seven brides for seven vampires. <laughs> seven brides for seven vampires. Um, but, uh, or maybe that's what it was, uh, Nate, thanks. But yes, I've got them both in my collection because I had to. And thanks to uh, uh, Age Boomer, who's not in the chat right now, but uh, who helped me track down DVD copies of those, uh, those films to complete my collection. Because they were all, Hammer was distributed, all the different movies were distributed by different uh, production companies, so it was not an easy find. Um, so, so yeah, Geeky Geezers tomorrow. Um, and, yeah, uh, Deleted Scenes only has Western Cinema t- tomorrow. So uh, then Monday will be um, Easter Parade. I've told you guys about that throughout the stream. Tuesday, uh, Lady V has, either Lady V or Lady Miss, you guys are both, uh, on it, so I super appreciate it. They're dropping the links. Uh, Tuesday at uh, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern uh, on Deleted Scenes channel. Uh, episode, I think it's, we're on episode 14 of season 2 of Twin Peaks. That's live from Sparkwood in 21. Uh, we will keep it succinct because I need to be out by 9 Central to be over on um, Rancor Steve's Rumble channel for Manorama. Uh, so I will uh, drop the link to that in my community tab when he gets that up on Tuesday. Thursday. Thursday, my special guest on Thursday things will be Mikey Seuss 4. So we'll be learning about him and his channel. Yep, and uh, we'll ask you absolutely to uh, make sure you subscribe to him. 
Uh, man oh man stuffs. Yes, exactly, Lady V. And, okay, I, I've I've actually seen two of the man shows. The first one I didn't care for so much. The second time I watched it, they're talking more about family, and these were guys talking about well the ones that have kids talking about what it's like to be a dad, and I really enjoy that show. So it's not totally a testosterone fest. I mean, there's some some cuddly moments in there too. So it's like. You know, ladies, check it out. You know, I yeah, I did tell Netter you, you gotta you gotta take it in the spirit it's intended. A lot of the show is is directly responsorial to the modern fourth wave feminists, man hating you know uh, world that we live in today. You know, and and saying no, no, masculinity is not toxic. You know, um, but it, it, it's also about what it means to be a man and those are positive things like she said being a father being a good husband you know uh, the virtues of of being a man because that's really what being a man is not being toxic um so yeah um i i know that boomer and i talked about a subject for friday for last call but i was pretty out of it more out of it than when i drink because uh, I, I, I really, it turns out, after I, I got off the stream on Friday, I was definitely running a fever. So, and, and I had a very fitful sleep last night because of it. So I, <laughs> I, I know he, he suggested something, and I don't remember what it is, so I'll have to double check with him and he'll <laughs> remind me. And then I'll get that stream up. Um, that's why, you know, that's why he's my designated driver, right? Um, so that, that it, will, it will be fun. It will be interesting, and there will be drinking this Friday on Last Call. Now, Saturday, I know, is going to be an awesome watch party because oh, it is yeah. on Big Al Presents channel. What are we watching on your channel, Big Al? We are watching from 1975. We are watching a movie about a world going crazy. We're running people over on the highways. It is a national uh, pastime. <laughs> Death Race 2000, starring David Carradine and Sylvester Stallone. It's going to be a hoot. Uh, if, you are, been, huh? if you are a Love Boat fan, you'll oh, see yeah. also Fred Grandy, who used Grandy, to play yeah. Yeoman Purser. Uh, Gopher. Gopher. Gopher, yeah. And like, he was governor of somewhere or other, he, too. Yeah, he, he was the governor of... I can't remember where now. Yeah, but he was a governor for a while, too. And, and, uh, and the guy who created Cobra Kai, he's in it. Really? Um, 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 the, um, I can't remember. Oh, what's what's his name? Name? <laughs> Martin Cove. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, see, that's the thing about that movie. There's a lot of people in there that went on to do other things that you know them from. But like other dystopian films, I'm afraid that the, that's one of those ones that we thought, yeah, okay, that's, that's farcical. And, and now I look at it and go, you know what? That may still come to pass someday. You never know. Um, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Big Al presents Films with Friends. Death Race 2000, 9 o'clock Central, 10 Eastern on Friday. So, something to look forward to. Absolutely. So, gentlemen, any final words? Let's start with Big Al. I just uh, want to thank everybody for being here. We had a really... Uh, good time with this hope everyone has a very happy easter uh and if you want to know what i thought of godzilla and kong uh check out my channel i've got my review up on that plus a couple of retro reviews uh, including mm -hmm. duel which i watched for the first time this week steven spielberg's first film oh there you go there you go yep. um well, i want to say hi to sashi Oh yeah, Sashi. Yeah, he's been oh, here a while. Yes, but yeah. Deleted scenes will be joining us for Death Race 2000. Oh, the feminist wave has reached there too. Brought in by the UN women. Oh, the UN needs to be disbanded. It is a scourge on the planet. Um, don't get me wrong. Women are wonderful. I want them to be happy, but I can't listen very long to someone telling me. I'm hateful when they frankly don't know the first thing about me. Yeah, it's 
It's the same thing that we have said about every other division that exists. When you uh, demonize any group of people based on a broad cloth, you are the bigot. You know, that's just how it is. Um, what am I? Oh, netters men are like onions. We have many layers and sometimes we make you cry. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly true. Um... But uh, also, thank you, Lady Miss, for dropping uh, a lot of the future uh, streams that Netter has laid down. Um, yeah, she's got them up for months in advance, so you can go and hit notify on those. Uh, you can mark your calendars uh, and have something to look forward to. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I need to get that, uh, uh, that organized with my Monday stream, but I just haven't yet. Right gonna, now, I'm still I'm reactionary. Try, I'm going to try to do that a little bit. I usually just go stream to stream, but yeah. uh, I'm currently working. I, I've got the groundwork on every thumbnail for the rest of the year started as of tonight. That's what I did tonight. Well, at least you get it up more than a, a week in advance so that you know we can promote it and stuff. Yeah. I am not that good. Sometimes I, like on the Friday stream, I don't get the, the stream up until that day. Oh, yeah. So that makes it difficult for anyone to share out the, 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 the stream for me. I should do like a, like a, you know, coming the rest of the year on Films with Friends. Dude, you saw what I did for uh, the yeah, general yeah. streams with the promos. Yeah, I, I want, I want to get good enough uh, and 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 organized enough where I could start doing streams for individual weeks. So you have like Death Race two thousand. If I could get a promo put together to play throughout the week, like a commercial, is what I'd really oh, like to do. Like I'm just not little, there yet. I like the little snippets I do before. Like, yes, before exactly, the, exactly. I just piece together the. Uh, Trailer. And I think it was Nate or somebody said, well, what you should do, if you can keep them under, I think it's like under 30 seconds, you can turn them into one of those YouTube shorts. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop in the chat my upcoming guests on Thursday Things in, up until May 16th. So if you are interested in knowing who my guests are, I just plop them all in there. Oops. Okay, and, of course, if you are interested in being one of her guests, make sure you reach oh, out to her. Okay, that came out kind of crummy. When I first put it in, it came out nice. So it's like name, date, name, date, name, date. But they all kind of squooshed together. So sorry about that. Did you, copy, like that. did you copy paste? Yeah. That's what, that's what yeah. yeah, copy copy paste and chat does not work well. But when it I doesn't. did that, it looked good until I hit enter. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it reformats is. when you hit enter. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay, let's see if I could fix that. But uh, anyway, so yeah, and 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 like tonight, I, I got to get those notes put together for Oop. Boomer. Have you noticed Boomer's been now doing like a slideshow presentation for for the uh, the geeky users, which I think makes it a little bit more interesting. I, I think it works well. Okay, well, they're up there. It doesn't want to quite yeah. work for me, so. Yeah, you would almost have to do them as separate lines, and it's not worth the effort. Well, it depends. All my admit, are worth I mean, I'm kind of intimidated. I haven't done this before, but I will try. Well, look, Curtis, um, I get that, but if you are, you know, if you do have a channel and you're trying to uh, promote... He's going to be one of my guests. Yeah, you just got to... Hey, I, I stopped by one of his live stream. I caught him on a live stream once. He was there just you testing go. out. I just popped in. It's like, hey, how you doing? See? So you've already got the built-in audience yep. here, Curtis. And look, it's just like it's just like Chugs, right? You know you can. You know you can. You know you can. Just do the it. The thing is, it's like we'll ask you questions and you answer them. So things we ask is for like all our guests is like, um, what made you want to start a channel? And if your name, if your channel name is different from your actual name, it's like, how'd you come up with that name? Like, what inspired you? And and you know, like, what is your channel about? And those sorts of things. So we're just kind of getting to know you a little bit, letting our chat get to know you. And, um, and keep in mind who your audience things. is. Yeah. You know, it's all these people you've been sitting and chatting with, you know, for weeks now. You're among friends. Don't worry. You'll be mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. That's like, you know, and everyone has to start somewhere. And so it's like, 
let's get an idea what you want to do. And, yeah. uh, wait, wait. Lady V I, says, if you disappoint me, you'll only lose a pound of flesh. Okay, if that's how it works, Lady V, I need to disappoint you at least 25 times. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's just a joke. Oh, that's too bad. I could really have Lady V come and live with me. And I'll just disappoint her all. Just the time. disappoint her on a daily basis, right? Yeah. <laughs> it take a while, but you know. It's like I wish it was that easy. Disappoint me, lose a pound of flesh. It's yeah. like yeah, I'd love to lose a few pounds that way. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's okay. all I got. I'm out. Okay. Um. So of course, then I guess it's up to me. So, of course, I, I always end with make sure you, that you are please sub to every member of the panel as well as every member of the chat. And if you think you're sub to all of us, please go back and double check to make sure that you are still sub because YouTube sucks. And with that said, we can talk amongst ourselves and that's all well, good and fun. But it is so much more fun when you guys are joining us in the chat and you're dropping your comments, questions, trivia, being goofy, whatever it may be. And it doesn't feel like we're separated by miles or continents in some cases. It feels like we're all hanging out in the same room, enjoying each other's company and having a great time. <clears throat> and you guys, you know you're not just our friends. You are our family. We love you guys and we appreciate you so very much. You can choose to be anywhere and you chose to be here tonight. Uh, it's just so encouraging to see you here. Not just, you know, uh, to encourage me, Troy and, and Big Al, but encouraging the chat, talking to each other, building each other up. It's so nice to see that. I really hope that y'all have a wonderful Easter Sunday, uh, however you may celebrate it. Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, Jewish traditions or Christian traditions, whatever other traditions might be out there for it. You know, I hope you just have a really nice Easter Sunday and that you enjoy your upcoming week and of course we really do hope to see you on the other days that we are going to be broadcasting so was that monday tuesday thursday friday saturday right we're every day i think but wednesday aren't we uh monday tuesday thursday friday Saturday. yeah, yeah i think we got something wednesday. going on every day but wednesday so we hope to see you in every single one of our streams thank you again for being here i said we love you guys good night and god bless <laughs>